In this video, we're going to take a look at two different types of risk. The idea here is how can we classify the risks that investors face when making an investment? In some cases, the risk they face is very company specific, and in other cases, it's more market specific. Understanding the differences between these two types of risks can help us later when we start thinking about building better portfolios, especially if we want to think about reducing risk or minimizing the amount of risk that we're exposed to. So, Stick around and let's talk about risk. Most investors are risk averse, meaning they will only take a risk if they're being compensated for doing so. But what are they afraid of? Well, if we tried to make a list of everything that could go wrong and cause an investment to fall in value, it would take quite a while and you'd need a much longer video. In general, we can divide the risks into two large buckets. One bucket includes all of the risks that affect the company, but not necessarily any other companies. Even this list would be extremely daunting to construct. The thing with these types of risks is that what is bad for one company might be good for another company or even the rest of the industry. For example, when Chrysler nearly failed in 2008, it was, in a way, good for Ford. Some customers that would have considered buying a Chrysler decided not to because of the bailout, and they switched to Ford. So Chrysler's near failure was only a problem for Chrysler, their suppliers, their employees, and some of their customers, but their competitors were not hurt by Chrysler's situation. The other bucket includes risks that affect the entire economy. Underlying the Chrysler problem in 2008 was a recession that was causing consumers to struggle to gain access to loans, people were getting laid off, stock prices were falling, and as such, these factors negatively impacted nearly every company, including Ford, GM, Chrysler, Toyota, and all the other automakers. I hope you can see the difference between these two aspects of the same event. The recession in 2008 was systematic in nature meaning it affected the entire economic system. However, Chrysler and GM were the only car companies that had to take the Treasury's Troubled Asset Relief Program, or TARP loans, adding a significant firm-specific component to the financial crisis. We call these two types of risks idiosyncratic and systematic. Idiosyncratic risk only affects certain companies or industries, but not all companies or the economy as a whole. Systematic risk affects all of the actors in the system. Companies, central banks, individual investors, employees, consumers, and everyone else. As an investor, I didn't have to invest all of my money in Chrysler. Instead, I might have put half in Chrysler and half in Ford. That would reduce the level of idiosyncratic risk in my portfolio, but both companies would still be exposed to systematic risk. Since we can diversify away the idiosyncratic risk, investors must only bear that type of risk if they choose to. As such, the market won't provide them compensation for bearing idiosyncratic risk, but they can't diversify away the systematic risk. They could hedge it out of the portfolio, but then their expected returns would also be hedged out. So investors typically select a level of systematic risk they're comfortable with, and their compensation will be commensurate with the level of risk they bear, on average, over the term of their investment. 